<laughs> it's the banana I left there. <laughs> just, uh, just to slip Simon. it up a little bit. Here we go, you guys. Final day in the Oslo Esports Cup. Yeah, and will we see another slip up from Magnus in this game? The game has started. It's a Queen's Pawn opening, like Simon called. This is Mamadarov's calling card. He always tries to control the center with white. And Magnus just pushing a pawn forward, getting ready to Fianchetto, the black dark square bishop. Will he go for the Grunfeld defense, the King's Indian defense? Let's see what he's got in store. Mamadarov just flexibly bringing out his knight. And uh, yeah, Magnus just. I think it all depends on the opening for him. If he chooses something really wild and allows Mamadjarov to show his quality, show his uh, kind of fire and ferocity, then yeah, it's going to be an uphill struggle for the world champion. Yeah, I, I, this move, I, I think with this move, Mamadjarov probably wants uh, Magnus to go into a King's Indian defence because uh, there's two main options that Black can play here. This is one of them. This is the King's Indian defence. And, uh, well, a bit of a surprising move there from Amjarov, just pushing the pawn to e3. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Ready. And it's actually something that Mamajarov has done before, very recently, actually, in Berlin in 2022. Yeah, he's also had this exact position earlier in the tournament. And uh, after White grabbed a pawn there, Black's knight coming out to the edge of the board. Black is about to restore the material balance. There we go, taking the pawn back. And Mamajarov wow. very ambitiously pushing pawns forward against the Black Knight. But look at the dark square diagonal of Black's bishop. It's nearly open. OK, Shaq had to play this move. White's bishop now on a good square itself. But this is double-edged. Either it's going to be great for white with his extra space advantage, those white pawns on the left push forward, or those pawns might be targets. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Mamadjarov actually will probably be very familiar with this type of position because, you know, he played it once in a blitz game against, uh, well, Chess 24's very own Peter Svidler. Ah. <laughs> OK, and Peter Svidler, also an expert of this type of setup with black, especially with where black has put the dark square bishop in front of black's king. Uh, so how did that game end up? That you game know? actually ended with a victory for Mamajarov, but mm -hmm. uh, Kate, Peter Svidler did kind of force White to compromise on the left side of the board. Here, Magnus has kind of retained some flexibility. And I think he, he lost to Eric Hansen, wasn't it, actually? Uh, I think Eric beat him with the black pieces earlier on in this tournament uh, in, in a, a variations similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, uh, White has a little bit of a space advantage. You can see that White has two pawns up the board, which is nice. I think Mamajorov is most effective when he has the space advantage because you can use that to generate an attack and to gain the initiative. It's a bit harder to play actively when you're cramped. So uh, I think that's 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 a good sign for Mamajorov. Um, but Magnus doesn't really have any weakness here and just playing some very sensible moves at the moment. Yeah, yeah maybe Magnus has been scarred by those previous defeats against Mamadjorov in last season's tour final. Now he's trying to trade off as many pieces as possible. Look, the knight, one set of knights have gone, one set of bishops have also been traded. It definitely feels like Magnus is trying to be solid uh, and lock down this game. Magnus, if it does go to an endgame, he might be the favourite. Uh, so it's all about whether the queen stay on. And Shaq gave a check with the white queen and the black knight went back to block the check. So small advantage for white here because White has these pawns on the left side and he can push them at any moment. But, as Simon said, no weaknesses in the Carlson camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's looking very calm, Magnus. A draw f for him with Black is probably a good start because he'll have the white pieces next. So we see all the, the all of uh, Shaq's pieces are sort of uh, are, are around his king, mm -hmm. except for, for that rook. But he does have those two pawns. Yeah. Will those become very important with, in this game? Definitely. Uh, it might depend later on, uh, once the white rooks centralize and come to more open lines, it might depend on whether white can push the pawns forward safely or whether black will actually target those pawns. If you imagine the queens and the rooks may be coming off, then those white pawns on the left side might actually be weak. They might oh. be hard to defend. But uh, it's just about the strength of the major pieces. Here, it's very, very easy for white's rooks to come to the center. Look at the black rooks. It's less easy for them to find good homes. Um, so White's king is super safe, as you mentioned. Black's king, for now, is safe-ish, as long as it's got a knight around it. And, uh, yeah, it's just a well about whether Mamajarov can bring the White Rooks to the centre and find a productive plan. Often, in these types of situations, planning is the problem. Uh, White might kind of set up the dream scenario. White's queen on a great square, White's knight on a great square, the White Rooks will find good squares, but what next? That's the big question. Especially if your opponent has no weaknesses, like Black's camp here. Um, it's very hard to find a plan. Yeah. And it's going to be quite straightforward for Magnus, actually, to find a plan. You know, he's just going to push up his pawn, his deep pawn, one square, 
move the queen, to connect the rooks, and, uh, well, try to eventually target the one white pawn that's not supported by a fellow pawn, and that's the c4. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was fine in these positions, though. If you're playing with black, you are very cramped. Look at black's pieces. They're, they haven't gone further than the third rank, if you look at it from his point of view. But white's got three pieces on the, on the, third, on the fourth rank. And um, if white generally doesn't do anything, let's just say he really doesn't try to push, black to make progress will struggle. Uh, but I think what Magnus has done, which is maybe a clever idea, is swap off a couple of pieces. Because when you have a more cramped position, it is advantageous to try to make some exchanges because you have less space to manoeuvre your pieces. Uh, so swapping some pieces off, it just makes it a bit easier uh, to manoeuvre. And here, well, we see Mamjarov, as David said, just bringing the rooks onto an open file. And I expect the other rook will now line up against the queen. Yeah, so the white's rook will come to the centre as well. And um, just, to t just to talk about plans as well, we've talked about the past, trading pieces. Now the plans for white could involve maybe pushing these pawns forward at some point uh, on this side of the board. But also white does have the option maybe uh, later if you prepare it, you can push forward in the centre. Maybe you have cho choices uh, and options to push forward here later on as well, just to destabilise the black knight. You're very flexible with white. Meanwhile, black will just kind of try and lock things down. And uh, with this last move, black's getting ready to connect his rooks, as mentioned. Black does have pawn breaks of his own. Maybe he can push this pawn forward to challenge white over here. Maybe he can later prepare pushing in the centre with one of these pawns. But it does take a long, long time. And I think we'll see the game take a slower pace for the next few moves, at least. I mean... I, I mean, there's two moves I just want to mention. If Shaq is in really crazy mood, he could push that G-pawn mm -hmm. two squares. He could do, uh, exposing his king. But another thing maybe we can just look at very quickly uh, on analysis board is uh, a very typical-looking move. If you push the A-pawn right on the side of the board up two squares, this is the kind of mistake that white can do. I think it's a mistake. Uh, you're, you're trying to make progress. If you get that pawn one square further, fantastic. But if you play that, black can first of all push his pawn two squares. And then you have to do something now with that pawn. You can't guard it with your pawn anymore. And if you push it forward again, well, you can see there's a major uh, outpost uh, in the position. And that's the square there, the square in purple. And white can now never cover that square with a pawn. So black has that square under his control for the rest of the game. But OK, uh, Shaq has gone for a different approach here, threatening to win a pawn. Yeah, he's threatening to win a pawn. So after Black's queen move forward, Shaq has jumped into the centre with his knight and uh, really ambitious there. As you mentioned, Simon, threatening this pawn, which is actually attacked by three of White's pieces now, the White Knight and the White Queen and the White Rook. Uh, and if Black, for example, pushes a pawn to kick away this White Knight, I think Shaq's idea is to actually retreat, to step back and put pressure on Black's knight this time, utilising the fact that actually the Black Knight is sat in a pin on this diagonal. It's getting really tense. If White can play this, then he's actually destined to capture this black knight on the next move, for example, here, and he will shatter the black pawn structure. Suddenly, black has doubled pawns, an isolated pawn. It looks like Shaq is really creating the threats already. I was wrong. I said the game would take a slower pace, but he's going Ooh. for something ambitious can with I, this knight. Can I ask something? So his white knight is on e5. Mm -hmm. Why is f5 so much better than e5? They're right next to each other. Yeah, um, that's a very good question, Kaya. I guess it's looking at the white knight and looking at the black king. And white's knight actually needs several moves to go and check the black king now. Um, so white's knight is uh, it's nicely centralised, but it can get kicked away on if you kind of shifted it one square across. That square's covered right now, but it would be able to check the black king mm -hmm. very, very easily. Um, so, yeah, somehow e5 is never as stable as the f5 square. Um, it's to do with pawn structures as well. It's just... Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain, but, yeah, it's all about getting close enough to deliver checks to the Black King. White's knight isn't able to do that in the next couple of but minutes. But is it a good knight now? Um, I'm hoping it's a good knight for <laughs> all of these players, but uh, that's a very good piece in the middle of the board as well. And a good knight later, we hope, as well. So, yeah. I was, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, now that you guys have mentioned good knight, well, it's certainly going to be such a thrilling finish to the tournament and, uh, you know, to kick off the fun. And also because you really love it when everyone at home gets involved. I just wanted to share with you some selfies. Already? Yay. Already. And uh, Abhishek says uh, they're them watching the show, but their partner in crime tonight is, oh yes, Mr. Churchill, Ooh. trying to find out how to beat this guy, Carlson. <laughs> um, Simon and David will get there. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, from a, it's from a British advert, uh, insurance advert. It's great. Uh, and uh, 
also Tatiana Flores. She is enjoying the evening with some excellent chess and commentary. And uh, thank you both for watching. And of course, if you want to join in the action, send us some questions. We will try and feature them on the show. And of course, we do love your selfies. Please tweet us using the hashtag ChessChamps. Oh, yes, please do. And uh, yesterday, you were all tweeting who you support, who you're rooting for in the Tour Finals. Sorry, <laughs> also Esports Cup. And uh, go ahead, do that today as well. These players, they need your love and your energy on social media as well. I bet there's a lot of Chakriyar fans out there. What a player. Yeah, no, definitely. Everyone really admires his creativity yeah. and the way he just comes up with aggress aggressive moves because I can tell you that uh, there were three of us sitting here in the studio and I don't think any of us really thought about this night jump at all. We were kind of considering much more positional ideas, you know, improve the rooks, slowly, slowly wins the game and uh, Shaq is like, no, 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 I'm going to pose problems from you mm. immediately. Yeah, I, I'm not sure he's actually threatening to win that pawn, though, saying mm. that. It looked like uh, that was the idea. I actually think his main threat is the, the knight move that David uh, demonstrated to actually try and double Black's pawns. Uh, because, of course, maybe we can show it quickly. Like, let's say Black plays h5. Not a stupid move, but it does weaken the Black King. Stops the knight coming there. If you take the pawn now, uh, which, which we said, you're actually going to walk uh, into a pin. And I think just Black puts a rook in line with the knight and queen. If you move the knight, you lose your queen and uh, you don't want to lose your queen. I've done it too many times myself. It doesn't feel good. Uh, and you're going to lose the knight next move. So so the, maybe the real threat is is actually this this idea of uh, um, doubling the pawns. Okay, well, that so Magnus has just defended the pawn, but what's he going to do after the knight jump you pointed out there, David? Very good question. And the evaluation bar up in White's favor now because uh, the idea behind White's move, as you mentioned there, is to simply drop back, put pressure on this black knight, on this diagonal, and it's impossible now to stop and knight takes knight. Uh, okay, it's on the board. How is Magnus gonna stop this? Because if he just takes a timeout now, if Magnus plays too slowly, uh, too complacently, then suddenly knight takes knight, and this is a terrible position for black long-term. This is an isolated pawn. It will remain a target for the rest of the game. And uh, yes, the black king is safe, kind of behind this structure, but with doubled pawns, it's not ideal for end games either later on. So it does feel like Magnus under big, big pressure after this knight move, threatening to take the black knight. Nice. If the black queen steps forward, defending the knight, but also threatening checkmate on along this diagonal, that's easily stopped by white's bishop coming forward and hitting the black queen. Is, Simon, you have an idea? Well, I, I, the only idea I can see behind Magnus's plan is to push the pawn in the middle of the board two squares. Uh, he hasn't done that. Okay, he's done this move we mentioned earlier, but the difference between this and earlier is that white can defend that pawn uh, if he so wishes. I mean, but first of all, just take the knight off the board. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're ruining Black's structure, and I'm very surprised about this because uh, it looks so ugly, uh, this pawn structure for Black. And um, I mean, what's his idea here? I think Magnus just assumes that he can hold this position and guide it towards a draw later. I'm not so sure. I think you're right there, Simon. Now White just pushes this pawn forward, maintains the integrity of these pawns. For example, if we see a trade, you've got to keep them side by side so that they cover every square. And yeah, it's definitely Prague, uh, sorry, not Prague, Mamajarov with the advantage, but Prague from afar will be happy to see this position. The world champion definitely worse here, definitely with a disadvantage. And we do have that position with the Knights off and Black having this kind of compromised pawn structure. Wow, wow, Mamajarov going for maximum here, not even defending his pawn. He's offering a queen trade. If the queens come off now, then white's rook is getting very active. I'm not so sure about that one, but it's very ambitious. So we'll jump back into the position in a moment, maybe after Magnus reacts. And uh, yeah, you mentioned it, Pragnananda will be looking at this from uh, his computer in the Oslo Esports Arena, but in his first game against Anish Giri, I'm just noticing the bar slightly over to Anish's side. So maybe the most happy player right now is not Pragnananda looking at his board, but Liam Lea that we see in the back there, or Jan Christoph Duda. The bar is over to Duda's side in his first game against Hansen. Liam Lea playing Jordan Van Fries today. Yeah. And uh, both Liam and Duda have chances to win it. I did have a quick look, actually, at um, uh, young Prague's position, and it, and it certainly seemed like Anish was very comfortable there with the black pieces. So it's actually Prague with white as well. So mm. if he loses white there, I mean, it opens up the tournament to 
everyone. Wow, so, yeah. yeah. And we should mention that all of the four players in the top four positions, they're not facing each other. So they have their own fate in their hands in a way. They, if they all win, they know they're putting pressure on the others. And uh, okay, some moves in this game. Meanwhile, the Queens have indeed left the board just as, uh, just as we predicted a couple of moves ago. And maybe to show what did happen because things have changed. Mamajarov is now one pawn up. And uh, in this position, the Queen trade, it was just too much tension for Magnus. Understandably, he traded off, took the Queens off the board. And now this pawn is very, very hard to defend. So Magnus just let it go. Uh, just like the Frozen Song, he captured a pawn here, and after the white rook took one of the, bl the black pawns, we saw a double attack, and after the bishop moved, rook takes pawn. Magnus, though, he's justifying this one pawn loss by bringing his rook forward, and he's hoping that now the black bishop is at least on a stable outpost, can never really get kicked away by a white pawn, and black's rooks are going to come down and target this lonely pawn, uh, this isolated pawn on the edge of the board. Uh, Mamadiarov now can't really lose this game, but Magnus is going to be hard to stop this plan going wow. for White's pawn. What a start to this final day. Mamadiarov is thinking he does make his move, and uh, we're going to head out to the lounge. There's some more birthday celebration going on today, Svater. Absolutely, and I'm here with the birthday boy himself. It's Lawrence Trent. Happy oh, birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're Thanks. also 24 like Duda was the other day. I right? am 24 this year, exactly. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, I know I, I look a little bit younger, but that's... That's fine. I'm, I'll, I'll take 24. And we're actually going to let him get by with that one because it's his birthday. <laughs> but we're talking about this uh, game now and we're seeing Shaq get a little bit of a pressing position. It's, uh, yeah. It seemed like there were two opposite people walking in today. Yeah, Shaq was in really good spirits. Um, I guess I can say this because it's common knowledge, but he was out last night <laughs> with us uh, socializing at the good night. And obviously, if you're in Oslo, make sure you check out great chess themed pub. Um, so, yeah, you got to get there. So Shaq was in good spirits today. Uh, Magnus was also in good spirits. He was a little less talkative. Uh, he had his his game face on. He wants to bring home the tournament, bring home the bacon. And, you know, it's going to be a very tough match, very uh, different styles. Uh, over, you know, their careers, Magnus has really had a hold over Shaq. If you look at all the big events, I mean, Shaq has been his client, uh, for want of a better word, for many years. But Shaq on his day is very, very difficult. And uh, looking at the position now, yeah, Magnus is the one who has to try and make a draw. I mean, he's he's probably going to do it. It's one of those positions where the computer gives plus one, but you just don't have a way to really progress easily with white. So I actually do think that uh, in this position, Magnus has got a good chance to hold, but he has to work for the draw, and it's going to be a tough match. But it was interesting what Lawrence is saying, because we were out with uh, Shakira yesterday, and it, it, it's really fun to hear this genius, because he is nothing short of that, a pure genius, open up about his introduction to chess, his childhood, how he had to stand up in the middle of the night, go to the park to practice his chess That's to get right. away from a really tough background. And, yeah. and, and it, it's, it's really a strong story. Yeah, I mean, he's got an amazing story. And uh, I, I've known Shaq, actually. I played Shaq here in the world under... 18 or 16 championships over 20 years ago. He's been an unbelievable talent for just forever. Everybody knew he would be a top, top, top player. And he nearly won the candidates tournament in 2018. I mean, he was at one moment, in my opinion, the favorite to actually win it. And then he would have played Magnus in the World Championship Finals. And his ambitions haven't stopped. He, he still wants to prove that he can make the absolute top, top in chess. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just going to require a bit of consistency, and he, he's away. He's one of my favorite players. Stylistically, I see, you know, I would love to be able to play like him. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to give Magnus a tough game today for sure. And you, Kaya, you got to have a really close talk to him uh, on a one-on-one -on -one as well, didn't you? Yeah, that's true. So, what Ivanka did in her chess talk with Mama Diara that will be released tomorrow a very deep and interesting talk with Shakri. we're going to talk more about that but you did seem a little bit surprised with his last move david yep surprised but impressed by mamajora's last move and uh, we have to jump in because drama might be about to happen in this game it feels like at least to me mamajora is going to try and take some big risks to win so remember white is one pawn up it's this extra pawn alice the a pawn and uh, at the moment this pawn is sufficiently defended it's defended once by the bishop, once by the rook, and by the other rook. But this means that all of white's pieces are passive defending this mere pawn. 
And now Magnus, he's been bringing his king towards the center on the last few moves. Clearly his plan, okay, he's changed his plan, but I was about to say his plan was to bring the king towards this white rook to try and trap it even. But I think Mamajorov here had a sneaky plan in mind. He was gonna give a check to the black king, force it to declare its intentions. And after the king moves towards the rook, for sure here, Mamajorov, he loves to sacrifice. He was actually gonna give a check with his rook, giving this rook up for the black bishop. But suddenly after the rook is captured and white takes back, Look at White's position, two beautiful passed pawns here, connected, and also active rook, active bishop, and uh, this position looked phenomenal for White. Therefore, Magnus said, okay, the Black King cannot activate itself yet, but if the Black King doesn't bring itself towards, uh, sorry, towards the White Rook, like this, then Black is just stuck, no plan. And Magnus pushing pawns, but that's not really gonna get him anywhere. I think the White King now is gonna start entering the game, and just as I say it, Mamajarov does play that move. The White King might even start shifting over uh, to protect its pawn majority over on this side of the board. Definitely looks good for Mamajarov right now. Wow. And uh, Ivanka, we talked about that chess talk. Uh, Mamajarov on the good night yesterday, having a good time with Sveda opening up about his past. And uh, when that chess talk is released tomorrow to Chess24 Premium users, they really can get a good look into his his past with it. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, no, he's incredibly honest about uh, his journey. You know, he tells all the stories about how he had to work super hard, how it was a struggle and in moments, and uh, also he shares some fun moments like uh, taking on players with only twenty seconds on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard he was doing a bit of the same at the good night last ah. night. I heard he played. Sorry, Sverre, but I heard he played a game when he only had 10 seconds against Sverre's three, and he still won. <laughs> oh, <on wow>. time. <laughs> so, uh, but the important question is, did he play Lawrence? Ooh, you know, <laughs> that's what we need to know. Yes. Did he play Lawrence? We need the, we need the scoop on that next time. We need the birthday boy to win some games today as well. Yeah. Yeah. Out there in the lounge. Yes. But is he? You called him a genius at the start of the show. Is that sort of uh, his chess style? He's just a genius. Intuition is great. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember I, I played him once myself and it was in the European team championships and I was playing for England against Azerbaijan and uh, I, I was just amazed by him. I mean, uh, we got into quite a sharp tactical position and he was just bang, 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 bang. When a normal human being would sit there for an hour trying to work it out, he just saw everything and it was incredible. You could sort of feel the energy and at that time it, 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 his play reminded me of, of something Gary Kasparov would do. Gary mm. Kasparov was, had that sort of energy, some, something special about the way he moved his pieces and there are certainly, when, when Shaq is on fire, there's something special about the way he plays. Um, and he can also play these positions as well. We saw him grind out yesterday, yesterday against Jordan when he mm -hmm. needed to win in um, some very positional games. He, he was able to do that. So um, so he, he's got a position that is, uh, yeah, going to be worrying, I, I think, Magnus somewhat here. It's interesting that you liken him to Garry Kasparov, both of them born in Azerbaijan, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, okay, just a trade of pawns. Not too much has changed other than that. But the White Rooks do have access now. White's Rook in the bottom corner, which has been slightly a sleep all game. It's on a decent square, protecting some white pawns, as I mentioned, but it can centralize itself, start checking the Black King. I think Magnus just wants to trade off as much as possible because that might guide him towards a draw in an end game. If all the Rooks disappear, White will have an extra pawn, but Black will have chances if there aren't too many pawns left on the board. And uh, also this Black Rook combined with the Black Bishop, eyeing up White's pawns in front of the White King. It feels to me like it should be very good for White somehow, though. Wow. Um, yeah. Simon, do you think, or Yvanka, do you think uh, Ma Magnus is going to hold this? It is a Magnus type of position, though. That's the one downside, maybe, for White. Yeah, it is a, a Magnus type of position. You know, we have seen Magnus be absolutely superb in the end game. And, uh, you know, it's not easy for White to make progress. There's no, there's no clear cut so to, plan, so to speak. And I like what Magnus has done, you know, trading off a set of pawns on the right side and just activating his rook. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ma Magnus' bishop is so strong. Uh, White's got some weak pawns as well. I mean, White's pawns on the queen side, yeah, it's an extra pawn, but they're, they're quite tied down. But I really like Black's bishop. If you compare the two bishops, Black's bishop is doing... Uh, two jobs, uh, is pointing towards two areas of the board. White's bishop is just 
passive behind the pawns. Um, so uh, maybe Mamajara's going to... I mean, is he setting up this exchange sacrifice? It's a worse version now, mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine, but we could show it on the board that is he going to play something dramatic here? Let's say Magnus, I, I don't know, plays something along the lines of H4. Mm -hmm. um, maybe here you'd have to be a bit careful. Well, OK, in the game, we could show it. This actually seems very strange because now the exchange sacrifice would increase in value, I'd imagine, because Black's Rook. So let's see, can he can he go Rook up in the in the actual position we're seeing here? Um, and do the thing that you mentioned, David, it's pretty much the same as before. Yeah, so this is what we call an exchange sacrifice, when you uh, sacrifice a Rook for either Bishop or a Knight. Um, I'm not sure why it's called the exchange sacrifice, actually, but after Bishop takes Rook, the idea would be to capture back with your pawn, and now you've actually locked this black rook out of the game. These two white pawns are connected and, of course, defended by their bishop. And earlier, Simon, you talked about how white's bishop was actually not a great piece earlier, but uh, now suddenly it's on an open diagonal, white's rook on an open file as well, looking great for white. I think the big question here is whether... Oh, wow, we've seen this. Uh, we've seen this happen on the board. The big question is whether black can sacrifice back the exchange, giving up the black rook for a pawn and for white's bishop. And uh, it's actually level pawns here. It just depends whether white's passed pawn is strong enough after the white rook, for example, steps behind and starts pushing it up the board. The one downside is maybe the black king is just in time to go over and block it. And, OK, we're heading in this exact direction. We're either going to see a draw or Magnus is miscalculated. Most likely, though, it is headed towards a draw. This is the current position, and this white pawn is very, very strong. But, as I mentioned, the black king is in time to stop it, or the black rook can go back and block this pawn. Ideally, you don't want to block with a rook. Rooks are terrible blockaders, but uh, I think just going back with the king should be sufficient here for Magnus. For example, the king going back, and look at this race just in time to sit in front of the white pawn. I would like to say just one thing. I mean, like uh, uh, Prague, um, it seems to be better. He seems to have an advantage now. So I did um, see the bar swing yeah. over. I've just looked at the um, position, and uh, you know, this could be obviously big. You know, if yeah. Magnus probably going to draw this one, Prague wins. But things are still building up they because are. you know, whilst Prague is maybe slightly better, and uh, Magnus is having to fight for the draw here, I can tell you, Liam Le is much, much, much better against Jordan Van Forest and uh, Chris Jan Christoph Duda winning against Eric Hansen. So, the heat is on. And I the just saw the bar swing on. all the way over to Geary's side oh. in Prague's game against uh, Geary. That must be a very intense game. Commentator's curse. As soon as I say anything, <laughs> what shall I say now? Uh, just say, so, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I won't win the lottery. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Giri, we did see him kind of change position a moment ago. Suddenly he's got his hand over his mouth like he's excited. Um, okay, has he spotted it? It does look like Prague has made a big, big mistake. So it's not a losing mistake by Prague, but Giri now can get an attack for free. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, tense, tense position in that one. Wow. Meanwhile, Liam and Duda doing what they need to do. Imagine the pressure on Prague and uh, Magnus as well. If yeah. Liam and Duda continue to win, if they win their matches in three games, suddenly... Uh, pressure is will on, be definitely. on. Yeah. Oh, drama, drama, on. drama. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry for putting that tune on your... <laughs> in your head, Simon. <laughs> Can't get this. Yeah, I'm going to have it there all the time now. Yeah. It's just going to be there for the rest of the show and you'll hear me <laughs> yep. bobbing along. da da <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, as David says, the current position here, I, I think the Black King is just in time and uh, you're prob we're probably going to see uh, mass exchanges. I mean, uh, oh. I, I, I don't know, because the White Rook can come for yeah. the F pawn, maybe the Freddy pawn. Still a bit of work to do, right? Yeah, still a little bit of work. Uh, I kind of wrote off the position as a draw, but there's one last trick maybe in the position. That's after White... OK, I was... Magnus shaking his head, uh, White giving a check here, hitting the Black King. Maybe he's missed this one because uh, now you have to calculate. After the Black King moves forward, going after the White Pawn, suddenly there's a nasty check. And after King takes Pawn, suddenly White's Rook and White's King are closer to these Pawns than the Black Pieces. And we're heading in this direction very, very quickly. It all uh, depends on whether the Black Rook can go back and defend. Maybe the Black Rook can come across and defend its Pawn this way. But if the Black Rook goes back, the key question is, is this holdable for black? Look how far away the black king is from its pawns. It's a race. The white king will suddenly go up, and I think the white king is winning this race. The black king too far away. Magnus decided, nope, this was too scary for black, despite the fact there's not much material left on the board. And instead, very safe move, but maybe a necessary one. He's defending with his rook. 
this one's going to be a draw, I think, any moment, because the Black King now at least can gain time against the White Rook. And if the Black King gets towards its pawns, if it gets to this square in the center, defending everything, it's a dead draw. Three pawns versus three pawns, no way through. Okay, we did see Magnus raise his eyebrows, though. Is yeah. he feeling the pressure or does he feel like he's gotten away with it? He's uh, bopping away now, so yeah. I think he thinks, yep, I have the draw in the palm of my hands. So I think he's pretty safe. Three pawns versus three pawns. It's just a question of getting the king closer to the right side. As we see Duda and leaving the Oslo Esports Arena. He won his first game now to Eric Hansen. Duda is one of the players fighting to win the tournament if Magnus and Pragnananda slips up. And Duda, he did have a sneaky look over at Magnus Carlsen's screen <laughs> just as he was walking out. So Duda knows if he keeps winning, big pressure now on Magnus Carlsen. And uh, okay, White's King attacked the Black Rook, the Black Rook stepping back and Mamajarov still trying to create threats. The White Rook maybe has the intention to slide across two squares, offer a trade for Black's Rook. And remember, the Black King's quite far away. So if the Rooks disappear, White has some chances. Maybe. <laughs> hey, what do you think about this? Uh, because I'm sure Magnus is thinking about this king and pawn ending. You know, right. he steps forward with the king. The rook will challenge its counterpart on f5. And then I guess the trade happens and the king makes a beeline as quickly as possible. Uh, we're seeing it. Yeah, we'll see a king and pawn end game. We might even see king versus king at the end. And this is the key move, locking white's king out. Look how the white king can no longer step forward onto the fifth rank. This was the move that secures the draw. Magnus stopping the white king from advancing and now nothing else to do you can trade a set of pawns but you're just running out of material a draw is inevitable yeah it looks like yeah i mean i, I was thinking white in these positions if the black king was further away could try pushing uh, his gary and harry pawns mm -hmm. trying to trying to create a, a pass pawn over there but the black and he's going to try that this is his only hope uh, but the problem is the Black King is just too near. So here you can try pushing the Harry Pawn. You will get a passed Pawn. In a King and Pawn ending, having what we call here outside pass Pawn, it's on the outside of the board, is normally incredibly strong. But the Black King, here it comes just in time to take it off the board and you can't get a more fighting game than that. Um, maybe here White is a little bit better because he has the opposition but it's a draw. Yeah, only the kings left on the board. First game with Mamadiarov and Magnus. And